assalamu alaikum everyone today we will be starting o levels chemistry and the first chapter that we will discuss is experimental design it's a very simple chapter in which we are going to discuss how to measure different variables including time temperature volume of gases volume of liquids and how to measure rate of reaction through two ways and also we will get to know how to collect gases based on their atomic weights or molecular masses so first of all how do we measure time uh, we obviously use clock in our daily lives and that's how we measure time in the lab as well we have two different type of watches there is something called a stopwatch a stopwatch which is digital as you can see it has a digital dial and then there is something called a stop clock there is a difference between these two stop clock is analog and stopwatch is digital moving to measuring temperature uh, during, during this time you must be resorting to this apparatus for quite a number of times so the first apparatus is called a thermometer the various types of thermometer there is mercury thermometer alcohol thermometer but you don't need to know that just know that we use thermometers to measure temperature and this funny looking thing is called a sensor it is used for automated sensing automated sensing that's what we use in industries because obviously we cannot there are they, there are there are like thousands of places where you need to measure temperatures you cannot go to every of those places and then dip the thermometer into that and then measure the temperature we just install sensors and they automatically transmit the information to computers installed in the rooms of the operators anyway moving on uh, there are different ways of measuring volume uh, this is the part that is tested in the exams uh, the first apparatus that you must be familiar with is called a conical flask it's called a conical flask it's also known as a Merlin Meyer flask Merlin Meyer flask okay uh, as you can see the numbering uh yes, this is visible 500 600 700 uh this is not that accurate because if for example if you want to measure 520 centimeter cube you won't be able to measure volume of 520 centimeter cube in this apparatus that is conical flask and there is something called graduated cylinder it is more accurate as compared to conical flask but the looks of it if you see there's 30 to 50 there are like 30, then there's 32, 34, 36. But again, if you want to measure 30.1, you won't be able to measure it with the help of a graduated cylinder. So it's not extremely accurate as well. It will do a lot of jobs, but obviously, if you want to measure uh, volumes that have decimal points, obviously, you cannot do that. So similar is the case with the beaker. This is 10, 20, 30, and 40 mLs. So if you want to measure 15, you won't be able to. You won't you cannot get it exactly right. You can have a vague idea about it, but even you can get a vague idea about 15, but what about 14 or 13? You won't. So these are not very accurate. Obviously, they, we use these apparatuses for uh, the volumes that are marked over here, but other than that, we don't use these apparatuses. The most accurate apparatus for measuring volume is called a burette. It's called a burette. As you can see, between each unit, 45 and 46, there are 10 markings. So obviously you can measure 45.1 and similarly you can measure 47.3 or and 48.9 or anything, you know, in decimal points. So it can measure up to 0 0.1 margin. So burette is the most accurate apparatus that you need to study in all levels. And then there is something called a pipette. This is not exactly an apparatus to measure volume. It is mostly used to transfer a particular amount of volume from one piece of apparatus to another piece of apparatus. For example, if you want to uh, transfer some liquid from a conical flask to a beaker maybe okay. let's say 10 centimeter cube if you want to extract from this conical flask you will use a pipette whose capacity is 10 centimeter cube and then you'll 
press the suction valve, liquid gets sucked air, liquid gets sucked in, and then when you release this suction valve, this liquid, this liquid stays inside the pipette, and then you can simply press the suction valve again, and then this liquid is released. That's how it works. Again, many students get confused between burette and pipette. Just make sure there is a telltale sign of a burette. You'll always see a tap at the end of a burette. This tap is open and then the liquid starts falling down. Uh, the application of burette we are going to study in acid and basis, so stay tuned for that video as well. Okay, so how do you measure rate of reaction? Rate of reaction, how would we define it? Rate means time when whenever there is a mention of rate we are basically talking about time and we are measuring rate of reaction which means we are monitoring reaction with respect to time or we can say we are measuring the speed of reaction a speed of reaction can be measured by two ways one of the ways is mentioned on the slide that is by collecting the volume of gas for example this is a conical flask. I put the reactants over here. This is a reaction in which a gas is released. This gas will enter the delivery tube and will enter the gas syringe. There is a plunger in the gas syringe. As the gas enters the gas syringe, it starts to push the plunger backwards. It keeps on pushing the plunger until it is releasing. There comes a time that this plunger stops moving. It means that no, no more gas is actually entering the gas syringe. At that time, we'll know that the rate of reaction is complete. And since you can see, there are markings over here. Let's say this is like 10, 20, 30, 40, 60. Wherever the plunger stops, that would be the marking for the volume of the gas release. So that's how you measure the volume of gas. And while all of this is happening, take a stopwatch and you get it running. So, you basically measure the volume of gas that is collected over time, over a certain amount of time. And what would be your, uh, what would be your sign when you are going to stop the stopwatch? It's when this plunger stops moving. Because this is a sign that gas is not being further released. So, there's another way of measuring rate of reaction. In this method, we are not going to collect the gas. Instead, we are going to let the gas let the gas go into the environment, we don't need the gas. But what we are going to do is, we are going to place the conical flask on a mass balance. It's an electronic balance. Now, when the reaction starts and the gas starts releasing, there will be a fall in this feeding. Over time, as more and more gas is being released, there is going to be a decrease in this mass. There comes a time that this mass is not going to be decreased any further. For example, at the start of the at the start of your reaction, when you started the stopwatch, the mass was 246.32. Let's say after one minute it decreased to 245. After two minutes it decreased to 243. After three minutes it remained at 243. After four minutes it remained at 243. What does this mean? This, these constant values means no more gas is being released because there is no loss in mass. It may it makes us realize that the reaction is complete. Reaction is complete. Then you will stop the stopwatch and you will write down the loss in mass, which would be your initial value minus final value of mass, and you will divide it by the time. Time at which it is loss and masses recorded. So that's all from rate of reaction. Now we are going to understand how do we collect gases. For example, if you have a gas and you need to collect that gas, there are certain properties that you are knowing that you're going to consider. First, you'll have to see whether the gas is soluble in water or insoluble in water. You will have that information while solving these questions that a gas is soluble in water or insoluble in water. If the gas is insoluble in water, then it will be collected over water. 
If the gas is insoluble in water, it will be collected over water simple. This is a reaction mixture in which a gas is released. It will go into this delivery tube and bubble into water. Since it is insoluble in water, it will be collected over water. Here. Remember this apparatus is only used for gases which are insoluble in water because if this apparatus was used for gases which are soluble in water, gas wouldn't have been able to collect over here. Gas would have entered the water and would have stayed there because it is soluble. So this apparatus is only used for gases which are insoluble in water. And if the gas is soluble in water then you will have to check other properties. If it is soluble in water, then you will have to see whether it is heavier than air or lighter than air. If it is heavier than air, then obviously it is going to travel downwards. And as it travels downwards, we collect it through this method, which is quite common sensical. It's called downward delivery method. Downward delivery method. Since the gas is heavier than air, the mass of air is 29 grams. If it is heavier than air, it's going to travel downwards and that's how we collect it. It's called downward delivery or it's also known as upward displacement. What does that mean? Upward displacement means when, you, when the gas is entering here, obviously this empty container or collection flask, this will have some air here. Okay? When the gas enters here, obviously uh, the air inside it will make room for that gas so it will go up. So this upward displacement comes from this phenomenon. This name comes from this phenomenon, but you don't need to remember this. Just know that this is downward delivery method. If the gas is heavier than air, it will be collected by downward delivery. If the gas is lighter than air, then it will be collected by upward delivery. Uh, I have to write. Uh, it's not upward displacement. It's upward delivery. Here as well, it's not downward displacement, it's downward delivery. If the gas is lighter than air, it is going to travel upward, so it will be collected by upward delivery. Right? So that's all from the first chapter. Hopefully you have understood this one. Uh, let me give you a quick recap. We learned how to measure time and that is through stopwatches and stop clocks. Then we learned how to measure temperature that is via thermometers and sensors. And then we uh, understood various apparatuses that is used to measure volume. There is a conical flask, there is a measuring cylinder, there is a beaker and then the most accurate one is called a puree. Then we learned how to measure rate of reaction by two ways. One is by collecting the gas and dividing it over the time in which it is collected and the other one is by measuring the loss in mass and dividing it by time. As far as gases collection are concerned, if you have a gas that needs to be collected, first property that you'll have to consider is whether it is soluble in water or insoluble in water. If it is insoluble in water, then you are going to collect it over water. If it is soluble in water, then you will have to see whether the gas is lighter than air or heavier than air. If it is heavier than air, then it is going to be collected by downward delivery. If it is lighter than air, it is going to be collected by upward delivery as is shown on your slide. 